Hey everybody, welcome back. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap up the conversation from our last deck where we developed a system of equations and we're going to, we we're going to solve them using the uh, matrix operations in the Casio. And we'll jump right in and show you exactly how that works. So these were the equations that we had. Um, we were going to solve for the current in our matrix by uh, taking matrix A, inverting it, and throwing that into matrix B, and we're gonna come up with some answers for the I's. So let's go ahead and check that out and, uh, and actually see what that looks like. Okay, so on the Casio, what we're gonna do is all of our operations are gonna happen inside of the run matrix menu, so your standard uh, calculator menu. And I prefer to do this through the math menu. I think it's a tad faster. Um, and I'm just gonna feed all the matrix components in all at once, and we're gonna crank it through, and we're gonna see something that's kind of interesting, I think, in the end. Um, so I'm going to select the math submenu, that's F4. I'm going to cruise over to F1 to get the matrix submenu inside the math submenu. We do a lot with the 3x3 three three matrix. So the way this works is rows times columns. So 3x3, uh, three three, it doesn't really matter which is which. But in the um, I1 row, I had uh, on my first equation 1, 1, and then negative 1. And then in my I2 row, I had 30. I1s, uh, 0 I2s, and 41 I3s. And then I had in my third column a 0, a 21, and another 41. And now what I'm literally going to do is just actually jump right into the answer. I'm going to invert this matrix. So what's crazy on the Casio is this looks exactly the same. Uh, shift key and then uh, right parentheses. The same as if you're flipping a number. Um, so matrix inversion is a lot more complicated than that, but um, not, don't ask Casio about it. Um, now the M by N, uh, you want to do this right. So I, I think this way this is going to work is I'm going to have uh, three in the row department and one in the column department. And we'll see if I did this right. I'll hit enter and viola. I did do it right. Uh, and what I've got now is uh, the A matrix being inverted into the B matrix, which was zero. These are just my constant numbers. Uh, 45 and 125 okay and pop out there and hit enter and then I get a fraction of all things if you could believe this what a crazy thing for a calculator to do hit the F to D button this should all be decimals um, and this is interesting so let's go write these down so here's my I1 here's my I2 and here's my I3 interesting we're gonna talk about that for a quick second okay so what we've got now is an interesting little thing uh, we see I2, for example, the current through this loop right down here, 2.58 amps. I3, the one in the middle, uh, 1.73 amps. Uh, I1 minus 0.86. What does that mean? This is why Kirchhoff's laws for circuits are absolutely bomb-proof. As long as you're really consistent and you apply math rigorously, you will find out at the end of the day whether all of your assumptions that you made going into the circuit were right. And so in looking at the top loop, what I had assumed is that it worked this way, is that it flowed counterclockwise. In fact, it didn't work that way, and it doesn't matter. What I learned is that current I1 doesn't actually flow in this direction. Actually, current I1 flows in this direction, and it's equal to 0.86 amps. So that's the self-correcting feature of the Kirchhoff's uh, law method of analyzing circuits. So as always, bring your questions to class. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye now.